Well, let's do that. Blue! There we are. Um, oh, that's the top of my head. There we go. This is where I work. Well, not now. Right, so put that there. Oh. Right, I'm going to get comfortable because I've got shitloads of work to do. I think we're tired of that. <laughs> right. Sorry, someone, a friend of mine's daughter had found a dead bird in the garden, and uh, uh, apparently she'd been having an investigation to see what had happened to it, which I thought was hysterical. Right then, I've just got to get all my windows up and running, so I'm going to need... Well, I'm going to need Unreal Engine, obviously. Let's get that up. And uh, docks, so view, docks, chat, there we go. Oh, it's working now, bizarre. I'll type the word bizarre in the window, it's full, there we go, bizarre. It's posted to all three mediums. Except, not Facebook, curiously, what am I going to post there? Embed in stream, can I do that? Oh, that sounds difficult, I think I'll pass. Right, so what was I doing? I've forgotten now. Oh yeah, <clears throat> so, hello everybody. I'm a game developer. Now, what I'm going to be doing is, firstly, wondering which of my many, 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 many assets has updated, because it puts a little dot in the corner, which is surprisingly difficult to notice. But that doesn't really matter too much. I'm going to load the wiki. I've got so many, by the way, not because I use them all, but because they appear free every month, and so I always grab them all anyway. I've got no intention of using the Paragon assets at all. Right. Now I need to. Well, Facebook will be telling everyone I'm streaming. So I'm just going to wait for this to load now. This is the boring bit, you see. This is, this is what happens. So I'm just going to wait patiently, empty my recycle bin without looking in it. That way I can be really upset when I realise I've destroyed something massively important. Ah, it's still going. Nice. Are you sure you want to permanently delete all these items? Well, yes. Bye. Ooh, there was a lot. Look at that. I wonder how many. Ooh, tons. Brilliant. Well, I'll never see them again. Hello, viewer. How are you, by the way? I can see you there. How are you? What a pleasure it is to see you. Well, I call this making a fog horn. I'm going to say hello to Dave Whitten as well. Hello, Dave. Right. It's still loading. You know what we need? We need some nice music from David Lynch to soothe our minds. Admittedly, this means that YouTube will immediately axe my music, unfortunately, which is a little bit of a problem, but if I play it quietly, okay, and turn off anything coming from the desktop, I might be in luck. David Lynch, our bum. Oh, it started with oh, there it is. Right, so excellent. The adjustments I've made have kicked in. The water is flat because the simulation is not running. That's okay. And here we see the problem. So let's go to from the lit to unlit. Here's our old stairs, which are full of boring epic loss. 
These are new stairs, which are considerably nicer. But here's the rub. So if I go to here, where my outside stairs are, and this is an outside stairs here, that's what an outside stairs looks like. It appears to not have any material applied to it, rather curiously, so there we go, that's the material applied to it. So anyway, um, ignore the fact that it looks like bottoms. Terrible. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace this with an outside stairs. So replace circuit actor with an outside stairs. And as you can see, well, firstly, okay, you may have noticed the scales a little bit more. There we go. So I'm going to have to fix the scale. So one, one, one. Okay, now another problem I've got is the rotation's a little bit wrong. So I can fix it by changing this rotation, for example. But that doesn't fix that rotation there, which then needs me to do minus 90 on it. So what I'm going to have to do is go to my original model and I'm going to have to rotate it. So let's first of all undo all the mess I've made. Like that. And now I'm going to go to 3D Studio Max 2020. And I'm just going to check again because I think the sun left a phone in a taxi. I'm going to make sure that they've got in touch eventually. Hopefully they will. Right. So 3DS Max is now loading. Now, if you have a wiki wiki computer, then obviously it won't be able to do all these awesome things. Unfortunately, but mine can. Which helps. It can totally have more than one window open. Uh, also, hello, all those fans. I'll say hello to anyone who turns up in the video. As long as I get a notification about it, because, you know, it doesn't notify me very much about things. But uh, if there's any, if you basically post a hello or something, I'll probably see that. Anyway, file. Open recent. Uh, outside stairs, that's the one. Right, now, you may notice this doesn't look too much like the other one. Don't worry about that. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my rotate tool. There it is. Turn on angle snap. I just press A. Ah, and I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees the other way. There we go. And I'll save it. Now, that should hopefully do everything that I need it to do. So, file. Export selected. And let me see. Um, what was I doing? I've completely forgotten. Oh, yeah, that's right. Need to export it to the outside stairs. Outside stairs one. This is outside stairs two. Because I like to keep an audit trail worth doing. Next. I'm going to save as to save my entire model as outside stairs 2. Not FBX. There we go. No, I said outside stairs 2. God's sakes. There we go. Professional me. Yeah. I'm good at this. Right. So, steps being done. I'm not going to close the window because, frankly, I don't think that's a good idea yet. I'm going to import and I'm going to import outside stairs 2, which you'll notice is a motion builder file. Fair play. Right, import. Now I could have re-imported it just with the rotation actually, I can come to think of it, but you know, I'm doing it this way because why the heck not. Now I'm going to pick this stair, right click, replace selected actor with, and let's have the selected object. Right, so now as we can see, it's a little bit big in places. I'm going to change these all to a one. Okay, and as you can see, it's facing the wrong way, but I'm not really too worried about that, because I should be able to just basically change this rotation to zero, and maybe this rotation to zero, and it'll fix it. Yeah, that'll do it. It's not bad. Okay. 
So, now then, I'm going to undo everything again. And you're like, well, why did you bother doing it in the first place? And that's because I want to go to Quixel Mixy Mixy Mix Mix. That's its official name, don't be fooled, it's not called Quixel Mixer. It's Quixel Mixy 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 Mix Mix. And there's a lovely picture there by. Why does it always make me sign in to my account? Why? Right, well, let's move you over here so people can't get a clue what my account is. Right, there's my password again. Oh, yeah. Per assessor work or work. Fortunately, I have two factor authentication on my telephone. So, let me just verify. Oh, I've touched the other, it's too old. Okay. The very good proven you're a human, it says. And I'll be putting the number. And today's magic number is 457869. 457869. There you go, you see, and now you know what today's number was. I hope you feel privileged to have shared that information with me. So another new version. No, it was just a hot fix, which I don't care about. Okay, so new mix. Outside says two. Notice I use an underscore, it's just my way. Because I quite like the original stare, which is like that, but it doesn't look good when it's endlessly repeated. It kind of very obvious, unfortunately. So custom mesh uh, outside stairs two. There we go. And what I need to do here is get my layers, material ID, load, color map. So now I've got two colors I can use: red and bright gray. Okay. And now I'm going to go over here to add a surface layer. And I'm going to use granite. Okay, and I'm going to darken this granite a bit because it's quite a light granite. Apply, there we go. And I'm just going to use that as like a solid colour, that way I'm not getting any bleed out on the edges and things. And then I'm going to add a new one, which will be so probably iron. I've got some nice irons here, the scratch painted iron will do it good. Okay, now I'll paint everything iron, which is a bit weird looking, but don't worry. All I need to do is go right click, add ID mask, and I can just. There. Okay, and now we've got that. Like so. So nice and subtle, as you can see, a bit shiny. Lovely. Okay, now I'll go to my export. And I don't want to export displacements. I might export metalness. Okay, and outside stairs is the map two is the name of the surface, so I'm going to export all the maps. Hello Creative Ed, how are you? Nice to meet you. I'll say hello in shower. Hello there. See? Gotta be polite. You don't have to be polite, but I like being polite. No, I'm like, oh, I'll jump a pot. Oh, then. <coughs> I'm going to close this down. It'll ask me if I want to save, and I do. And then I'll close it down again because it doesn't automatically do that for some obscure reason. But, oh, it's so nice having someone in the channel when I'm broadcasting. See, normally I'm just broadcasting to myself. Like some sort of strange shut-in job. So actually having other people around is jolly nice. Now then, I'm going to make a new folder, which I'm going to call Textures, because it's important to tidy up after yourself, as I'm sure our mummies have told us many times. Move here. I don't think I use the displacement map, but the good thing is when it comes to compiling, it'll notice how to use that map and it'll just delete it, so don't worry about that. Okay, uh, blah, 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 blah. here's my two stairs, here's my material, and let's get some new materials in here. 
more textures rather. So as you can see, specular has nothing. Let's uh, double click it here. See, nothing. This is great. So not important to me. So I'll just get rid of it again. Um, ambient occlusion is okay. Mountainous is just dark. So let's say albedo, ambient occlusion, normal map, and roughness. Four maps. Oh, you created it. Much appreciated, my friend. I'm just going to go and let the cat in a different room because it's crying about things. Ugh. Dog's done a poo on the floor. Honestly. This is one of the things about a home office. I bet the people at Pixar don't get that. I bet the people at Pixar don't turn around and go, oh, the dog's done a massive turn on the floor. No. <laughs> But they do at my house. Right. Anyway, back to working on the wiki. So, um, I've got these four materials. Like I say, I don't really need to bother with the um, diffuse, which is great because diffuse, not diffuse, um, displacement. Because displacement uses so much bloody resources. You know, it really does use the processor. Anyway, I'm going to make a material. And this will be outside stairs to mat. Try and give things a descriptive name. I know it saves time if everyone is called Box and Matt, but then you don't get anything done, unfortunately, because you'll never be able to find your models again. Right, now, if I want to preview my actual step and see what it's going to look like with the material on, what I can do is just select that and then select the teapot. And there we go. Now I can see my model here. And it's a very basic material, this one. It's just going to be uh, grey. So I get my albedo, there we go, and I'm going to drag my RGB from my albedo to my base color. Then I get my ambient occlusion, and I drag that to my ambient occlusion, obviously. In fact, you know, I'm sure you can work this bit out without me explaining what I'm doing. But there we go, there's the normal map, and then here's your roughness, there you see. Okay, now Oops, didn't connect that properly. Silly me. There we go. So that's the four important ones. Okay, and you can see there, material, etc., etc., a bit shiny. Now, what I can also do is if I press the number one and then click with my left mouse button there and there, okay, these two will be our metallic and our specular. Now, the minute they're both zero, okay, which is like fully non-reflective, no specular whatsoever. So our specular was a mid-gray, as I recall, so 0 0.5 will do for that. And then our metallic was quite a dark gray, so about 0 0.15 for that. So okay, just work it out in your head. It's kind of a tinker, you know. But as you can see, it means that the metal, the metal knob's shiny. And the hard stones are wild. Okay, so click save. That's my material done. Like that. And now what I can do is take these four and just feed them into my textures. Move here. Now they're out of my way. And these materials I can move to materials folder if I feel so inclined. Now I'm going to open my outside stairs. Hello. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply my outside stairs to material to them. Okay, and that gives me a much darker material, you see, compared to this kind of jolly little thing here. I quite liked that with the bits of moss on it, but at the same time it just didn't seem to work really. I mean a lot of the patterns on this will be repeated anyway, which is a bit of a pain in the ass, but you know, what will do. Anyway, um, I want to go here where it says collision and have a look at simpler. And as you can see, it's already calculated its own collisions. Um, part of what I want to do is to kind of make sure that's okay. Well, that seems okay. I mean, you can adjust it, so you know I don't feel that you can't. All you need to do is like obviously edit the shape or scale it or whatever else you want to do. I'm just going to keep it the way it is, though. Right. And because I've applied the material to this, it means it'll apply it wherever I put it. Now. Let's see if we can get this to work. So I'm going to go here, 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 
here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select a batch of actors, okay? And as you see, they're curving slightly. Now, this is one of the problems I had because they're all uneven and stuff. I've placed these already, but I've done a really basic job on these stairs, and so it's really working where I wanted it to. So now I've got them all selected. They've all got their own individual rotations, which as well as there's multiple over here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to replace actor with this. So now we'll get that straight away. That's the wrong actor. Good going, me. God. I'd fire myself if I wasn't the only team member. Okay, let's do that one instead. And this will be too long, as you can see. Perfect. Okay, now if I change the, this scale here to one, you'll see now they're all kind of going in the right direction and they're rotating the way they should, but they're facing the wrong direction. That's okay, because if I return that to zero, okay, and then this one to zero perhaps, What's happening? I blame my one viewer in the channel. It was your fault, the creator Ed. You made it all go wrong. Nah, it looks fine actually. This is uh, pretty much how I want it. So, <laughs> I know it looks absolutely chaotic and stuff, but uh, I can kind of fix bits that aren't quite right as I go along, so that's not really an issue for me. Like this one here. For example, and that way we get like still enough randomness for what I want. You see, now what I've done just out of curious, just out of interest, if you guys are wondering what you guy if it's just created it there, um, is I originally set up my stairs as an array using a very simple placement tool that had actually been free on the marketplace. And what it did was it basically constrained to a path. It's very, very simple to set one of those things up. Yeah, that nice one. So you can see the difference this makes incidentally as we go straight in. There we go. Anyway, uh, right. Uh, I want to turn the lid off. And now I can see the other ones. I'm just going to make sure there's not an actor underneath it. No, there is a bit of here. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I am going to go all the way up. As you see, it's a very, very, very long staircase. Okay, and I'm going to go all the way up until we get to up here. So I'm going to zoom out of it. A lot of, a lot of pieces make up this staircase, and this is why. Funny enough, 3.30 in the morning today, I was in bed, for obvious reasons. Cheers, man. I was in bed, and um, it kind of came to me how I could fix this problem. But I had to manually tweak every bloody actor in the entire scene. And I was so happy when it worked out. I was ridiculously happy. Not jump out of bed, start bollock naked, dance around the room happy, but happy nonetheless. Right, replace actors. And as you see, these are all wrong again. This will take a few minutes, incidentally, and it might slow the stream down. I better keep an eye on the stats, where have they gone? How are the stats do? No, I haven't dropped a frame yet, surprisingly. Go figure. Raw. Oh, there we go. Right then, so all I need to do is scale this back to one. Okay, and now I'll scale this, that says multiple values to zero, and also I better scale the initial rotation, which is this one, also, ooh, bugger, to zero. There, and that straightens that. Now, what I'm going to have to do, because you can see the stairs are like zooming away down to the scary depths. Which isn't really too bad, I think. But, you know. We're going to. Uh, I really should have. I really should have renamed this from Static Mesh Actor 550, but you know, not a lot I can do about that really. At the moment. You can't mass rename, which is a shame. So I think you can. No, you can't mass rename. Well, it's a bit too little that problem. Anyway, I'm going to now do the much more boring part where I have to then straighten various steps. Okay, and what we're doing is 
we are looking for ones that just aren't behaving themselves, aren't in the right place, whatever. You, know, you get the point. So let's just go down and there's plenty of absolute bloody chaos in here, which is great. Because you can't beat a bit of chaos in your model. You know, it adds that human touch because as humans we are incredibly fallible. And so when we're making things, you know, you think I made a sh I made a garden fence one time because uh, my wife pestered me and pestered me and pestered me. And I, you know, so I was like, fine, I'll make this fence. And um, I've never made a fence before, but you know, how hard can a fence be? So I cut all pieces of wood to the right size, or what I thought was the right size before I started. And then I put the fence up. And of course, like my fence just drifted. It was bloody everywhere. It, was, it looked terrible. It was so bad, the front fence that I did, that my neighbour, who I rarely spoke to, came rushing out of his house with a plumb line thingy and gave it to me and said, When you're doing the part that faces on at my house, please use this. I was like, that's when I realised I probably hadn't done a very good job. I unlit. Now, what we're doing is we're just going through this and we're looking for parts where it's not quite right, in our opinion. Little bits where it's just... You know, that way we'll get to see these big iron rivets that are holding stuff together for us. And you'll notice how it kind of curves around places and stuff. We want it to do that. With flowers moving in places, I love that. I deliberately changed the date that the game set just so that I'd be able to put flowers on it, because I do think flowers have a nice something to it. Even if it is supposed to be a terrifying Lovecraftian horror, we should still have some lovely flowers, in my opinion. Let's see. What are you doing, thing? There we go. Absolute chaos. And I love it. Okay, so we can go down here. Oh, around this terrifying corner. Oh, that's not good. Lit. Right, so if you can't see things very well, okay, just place an actor, do a point light. And a point light will show you, oh my word, look at that. Looks like it's gone non musically. Looks like it's gone weird. Right, so now I can straighten this out. The good thing is that. If you're using this kind of individual path, it means that you can really mess with the players as well. Because, you know, you could literally make it where the stairs move. Exactly. Exactly. I love how perilous the stairs look. Um, I was telling someone about this recently. i have been to the Netherlands um, when I was teaching over there, because I've taught 3D over there quite a few times, actually. And... Um, some of the staircases they have at the Netherlands, honestly, they're just insane. I mean, I love the Netherlands to bits, it's one of my favourite countries, you know, and um, staircases just blew my mind. Right, that is part of the mesh, so there's not a lot I can do about it. How big is the mesh? Yeah, it's huge. So let's keep going. Oh, hang on, I'm thinking about it. Where's that light that I was putting? Where is that light? Oh, there it is, there it is, there it is, there it is, there it is. That's you with me. Right, it's down here. Oh, look, there's another mess. Oh, it's fantastic the way it's all jankied up like that. Um, it is, yeah, it's just there's so many. If I just show you, uh, uh I mean, I could put lighting only. Actually, lighting only would probably work a lot better. Maybe I'll use that. Thanks for uh, giving me the push there, actually. I hadn't considered using the lighting only. And uh, that would save me a lot of time, because obviously that allows me to see things a little bit better. There you go, the creative ed. Extremely creative of you. I like that. Oh, 
By the way, anyone who's watching this old stream, if you've been here at the time, you'd be having a lovely conversation. It's like me and Ed. Oh, this goes, Jesus, this is such a terrifying staircase. I mean, to be fair, I thought the ones in the Netherlands were pretty worrisome. But... Hey. This is why it's great when you've got people who are like, you know, there when you're broadcasting that. Adds so much more to it. Everyone's got something to give, that's the important piece. I'm sure that's probably something Bob Ross said. Bob Ross is goddamn awesome, so. Everything he gives is gold. I'm sure I've watched every single one of Bob Ross's things. Though. I actually met someone who doesn't like Bob Ross. That was so peculiar. Actually meeting somebody who doesn't like Bob Ross was like meeting somebody who doesn't like small fluffy kids. You just don't know what to do with yourself. Like, really? Wow, I didn't realise there were quite so many like weird things going on with the staircase. By the way, if you think this staircase, this is only part of the staircase. Um, <laughs> I was brought up in the north of England, even though I don't sound like this, and um, I was brought up near Durham Cathedral, which has an impressive staircase. And so I really got into the whole idea of like big, winding, scary staircases. I think they're awesome, and they add so much character to anything that they give them to. So, I'm going to keep that handle there. I love it. I really like that handle. I don't want to keep that one too. I, I really like this. This has given me like so much more of an interesting shape than I expected it to. And I really wanted to save what was the original staircase from looking so boring. So this is really kind of giving me a lovely push. More than I could have hoped for, to be honest. This is still yeah, it was um, back from my 3D Palace days. One of my uh, one of my top chaps there, a guy called Daniel Roy, had mentioned that I the staircase was looking a little bit flat, which is understandable. I mean, the staircase was the second thing made on the island. Um, the first thing, obviously, was kind of the outline for the lighthouse and basically the island with like the bases on it. And then after that I started working on the staircase and I got plenty of feedback on how the staircase kind of oh, I love that shape. How the staircase kind of evolved. But um, I hadn't actually changed the basic steps since then. Now you see how these ones look different. They're far too busy by comparison. If I just get this material I think they look a lot nicer. I mean, I might change one or two so there's moss. I'll see, but I'm not really feeling it in that regard. But there's a couple here that need more steps as well. So what I'll do is I can go there, and then this one. So I can go maybe there. And the problem is with this rock here, let's move it because it wouldn't be overlapping the actual stone. There we go. Okay, so if I go to here, and probably want to start with that here, because these will need to be moved to the correct place. So that one, that one go all the way up through my static, uh, static mesh actors. This shows you just how much detail is in this uh, incredibly big island. The thing is, like I keep saying, you know, people say to me, you know, oh, you've done quite a lot of work there. It is actually an open world island. You can go around it. You can pretty much go where well, you can go where you want. The only thing kind of stopping people going where they want really is the fact that I put some brakes in place simply because I don't want people going everywhere straight away. Right. But they do the same thing on what the hell happened there? Oh come on. Ah, 
slot for this. But so stop them up instead, go all the way down, stop the mesh out to this one. Start to mesh out to perhaps there is. Right, so that should just be our staircase. And I'm looking around to make sure it is our staircase and nothing else. And it looks good. So uh, move to and steps. Okay, so now it's in the steps. Good. Now then, over here. Now, not these ones, because these ones are quite something different. These ones. Lovely. So I'm going to start here with static mesh act number two. And this is going to go all the way up. I think Ed's possibly died of thinking about too many polygons with me, unfortunately. We'll miss you, Ed. Up to there. there. A lot of actors. A lot of actors. Um, I think, oh, no, that's good. I think it's there. Uh, Unfortunately, you see, as I'm not really teaching, I'm just like doing things. Um, it means that a lot of what I'm doing is kind of very repetitive. And I always seem to try and keep the repetitiveness out when I was doing stuff, but I haven't even got any choice with this one, unfortunately. So, sorry if things are slightly extremely repetitive. Okay, replace actors with that one. Power, power. Now wait, look out window, stretch, yawn. I could do it with a glass of pop. Also, did my phone ring? It did not ring. Weird. Okay. Now then, scale. Let's scale this to one. And I've noticed that these scales here are smaller. And I think this could be that I reduced the size of the step to 0 0.4, 0 0.4. Now that's not really a problem, I'm not concerned about that, but I do need to make sure that I can flip them without an issue. So let's go and see what's happening here. Oh yes, oh look at that, look at that, look at that. It is completely the wrong way up. There's a few of them that are the wrong way up. Uh, I wonder. Yeah, it was that. Fascinating. Now then, the scale will probably need to be fixed. If I fix their scale to one there, um, could possibly do it. And all the way up. And now let's change the scale to one down as well. So we're going to use standard parts. Okay, that's not bad. Now we move these all to steps. And this will give me a chance to basically go over and see if there's anything that needs to be fixed. Everything's like running too flush, etc. I might need to do a little bit of work with the landscape. But what I did was, if you look, they've got all these metal pegs running around them. And the idea with those was that the metal pegs would give some reasons to why they can stand flush like that. And then here it just makes a really nice kind of skateboard ramp, which is cool. Hey, how's it going, Z447 underscore? Cool name. I think that was my mother's maiden name. How are you? Um, I am going to select this one. I'm not one to, I don't know. Oh, no, what's that? Oh, it's that step. So, static mesh actor. Bloody, 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 bloody. Hope you're doing well, Z447. And 
if you haven't been watching, what I'm doing is I am trying to basically get this working. Um, in that my old stairs were just six polygons and really basic. <laughs> oh, cool. Do you work in the 3D industry now or have you got a real job? Everyone I meet who was doing like 3D at university has gone on to do something else. My daughter did 3D at university and uh, yeah, she doesn't do it now. She did. She got like a first in game dev and of course naturally doesn't do any game dev at all. Okay, this looks like it's uh, quite wrong, so it's good. What the heck has happened here? Oh, I see what's happened. I haven't actually replaced them. It's just a square. God, I'm an idiot. There we go. Well, that, that seems to have fixed it, so that's good news. Prepare the rotation. Uh, I can see a couple of faults here that might be fixing. There we are. Now let's check the step height here. You'd be amazed how many times it happens that you can't actually get off a step anymore. Right. Right click, move to. Which university do you go to anyway? I used to go down and um, help and do like lectures occasionally. Well, a couple of times at Stafford. Eh. Oh, Cumbria. Fairly close then. Fairly close. I mean, obviously I'm in northwest, um, northwest Durham myself. So that's not a million miles away. Um, well, getting your portfolio set up is not shouldn't take you too long. I mean, obviously it depends on how much spare time you got, you know, because you'll have a job and everything you need to make money. But um, you know, if you ever want uh, someone to eyeball your portfolio, you know, just give me a shout. I don't mind doing that at all. Um, there's a lot of work if you know about. CAD and stuff like that. Um, something that you might want to look into is, um, what is it again? Virtual broadcasting has got massive man. Um, you'll probably have seen the Mandalorian, and that was all made using like virtual sets and things like that. Um, there's a massive growth at the moment because obviously the way coronavirus has gone means that like you know big outdoor sets are more the no no than they used to be. So I can highly recommend getting into virtual set development. Um, there's some pretty good groups for them as well on Facebook um, that I've been following. I mean, obviously it's all about what you want to do. Yeah, it was. It was created in Unreal Engine 4, which is what I'm using. And um, I mean, obviously the 3D assets that they used were created outside of it, probably using, you know, Maya. Would, my guess would be Maya ZBrush possibly 3ds max although they don't tend to use as much 3ds max as they used to but um the lighting and everything else was done real time as well in um unreal engine it's one of those really useful things you can do right let's, uh, that looks much better right let's see if i can actually walk up the staircase or if it just doesn't work <sighs> i hope i can you're going to see a very slow walk up a staircase in real time now, so i do apologize And of course, all the lights are out. And out. I mean, I got into using Unreal Engine 4 while it was still in beta. I was very lucky, actually. Yeah, yeah, that'd be cool, man. Send it over. Uh, dude, what are you doing? Just bouncing. I can see a problem here. I don't know if you can see it or not, but I can. Okay. So, let's go to this. Thank you. Um, a lot of it I got from Quixel and then modified or edited or did whatever, and uh, that really helped. 
Um, collision. Let's just remove all our collision. No, 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 no. Uh, collision. Remove. Okay. Now, in collision. Uh, box. I'm going to get this. Let me be here. It all may love. And now, I go into my. Left viewport. There we go. A lot of what I've been doing has been trying to keep on top of things so that it doesn't use too many resources because obviously you can use a ridiculous amount of resources. Um, and then suddenly everything slows down, which is why I wanted to make the stairs kind of one texture. And I had to avoid things that were repeat a lot. Hey Darren, how's it going, matey? I hope you're keeping well. And let's see if I get up the stairs now. Well, I cannot get up the stairs. Oh, that's not good. I'm going to work on that. Yeah, optimizing is a pain in the ass, as I said. You don't need to optimize as much, obviously, if you're doing virtual production. But um, obviously, if you are, then it's quite important. Okay, so I need to go to. Remember what I was doing. Blueprints. Call this character here. True, true. And you know, making it look nice is nine tenths of the job. Now, let me see. Character. Do be do 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 camera damage, no blah 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 blah. So much stuff in there. Uh mesh and hairs is funny enough to kind of all kind of character movements, here we are. Right. Maximum step height, so let's increase the size of that a bit because it looks like we need to. Compile, save. Um, not for this one, thankfully, although step height is important because obviously, we, um, because obviously, you know, I need him to go up the staircase. And he was able to get up the staircase before, but I think it might be just a couple of units higher. And if it's a couple of units high, he's going to get stuck. I could, yeah. That is obviously an alternative. Come on, get up that staircase. Okay, that didn't work so well. You absolute. How did you die on a staircase? Oh my god. Honestly. Let's have a look at this. Right. These ones have the wrong collision on. Brilliant. Yeah, here you do. Here you go. I think it could be the collision the collision boxes on these ones are a bit weird compared to the other ones. So what I'll do is I will go to my old stairs, which are these ones. Hello! And I will go into my collision, remove it, collision at a box. And if I go to my left viewport, I always love the fact that, like, actually, I don't look front. I always love the fact that my left viewport shortcut key was like control and chain. There we go. Incidentally, I will be doing um, some free Unreal Engine 4 official training. Um, note the word free, probably next week. I'll put an announcement on it um, on Facebook and probably YouTube. So if anyone wants it, there'll only be, I think, five spaces, because I'm at least teaching small classes. It's part of my accreditation, because I want to get my full badge for being an Unreal Engine trainer because that'll help. I'm all that need it. Right. There we go. You see that's fixed to that collision box. So now if I place it here. There. Got that collision boxes. So I just need to make sure that I can walk all the way up the staircase. So please do get ready to be bored. Oh, I love the fact that some of these are broken. 
Joy leaves me up no end. The lighting is all different as well because I'm not changing the lighting while I'm climbing up here. I don't want to uh, make my job any harder than it is. And you'll be amazed, by the way, how many times, if you're building your own project, you have to test everything. It's a lot. Oh, I can see the link. Thank you, Z447. I'll have a look just as soon as I've tested my staircase out. I do like a nice helicopter. Funnily enough, one of the very first 3D games I played, apart from Elite, which is still one of the greatest games ever made, was um, AHA, AHA 64C Apache Combat Simulator on the Commodore 64 of all things. And um, it was a great game. I mean, you know, we're talking like seven polygons or something. It wasn't incredibly up on that, but it was a great game. I loved it. That's not bad, and you've got to bear in mind with the optimization that obviously I'm I'm running 3D Studio Max in the background, and I've got um, I think I have Mixer money. No, I haven't. Now I've got Oculus though. Oculus is doing whatever the hell Oculus does. There we go, and then here I should be able to walk up the last bit without breaking the computer. Oh, I did. Oh. Such a relief. That's been driving me mad. Right, I'll show you what I've been working on over here, actually. I'm going to take the brakes in. <coughs> so, <coughs> I haven't tuned the speed that people walk and get around that yet, which is why, obviously, you're making this. Anyway, these are the fog are the foghorns for our, what do you call it, for our lighthouse. And they're going to be built into the fog house, the foghorn building. And uh, if you want to hear what the foghorn sounds like, uh, you can do that too, just a moment. Because uh, I spent a while getting the sound right for that. So, let me have a look. Right, you should be able to hear my desktop now. So. You'll like this. This is my SSD drive U. Everything on this drive is to do with developing the wiki. All 245 or 234 whatever gigs. That's all the wiki. Okay. Model files you named. Right, uh Foghorn, here we go. And probably an audio. Foghorn. Here we go. So this is a single diaphone foghorn which is, it was invented in 1929 and then rolled out through 1929 to 1930, which is when the game's set. And it sounds like this. Please tell me if you cannot hear it. That's the echo carrying on in the background, which it'll do for a while. I did a rough calculation to work out how much it'd take to bounce back over the island in the various nooks and crannies that the island has. So. <laughs> look at those collision boxes. Flipping great. Uh, is there anywhere you want to have a quick look at before I... Uh, thank you. Anywhere you want to have a quick look at before I stop working on this for the moment and have a look at the helicopter file? Oh, I'll tell you what, here's a nice little hidden thing. Not many people know it's there. Let's see, it should still be here. Play for me. Well, no problems. I'm going to have a look at that helicopter file in just a second. Hang on. Here's a nice little orrery. I do like orreries. So I thought I'd build one and put it in a special little hidden area. But of course, the tricky bit was getting all the planets and things to move at the correct speeds and rotation, which they do. I love all these. I really want one of my own. But anyway, I can't stand around here all day, waiting for the apocalypse. Just going to make sure everything's working the way it should be. Oh, down I go. Oh. <laughs> there we go. It's a long way down to here. 
Right, now I need to check and fix my lighting, because my lighting is all over. There we go, that's better. Can't have these shadows being quite so light, otherwise there's no meat to have a torch. Right. It does get dark down here, which is the idea. <laughs> it's just time, time dude. Thank you for saying so though. Um, you know what it's like being an artist, you know. Our egos are as fragile as Donald Trump's. But to be quite honest, you know, anyone can make anything. It's just a case of time. But of course, you're younger than me and your time is considerably more valuable, obviously, because you're trying to get yourself going in the world. Right, let me have a look at this. Nice. Transport helicopter, isn't it? It's like a commercial transport helicopter. That's really nice. I can't tell how many polygons it is, but that looks really pleasant. Yeah, that's a nice piece of kit there. Is that the one they use to um, take people to the uh, oil rigs? Or would that be small? It's probably a small one for the oil rigs. It's a really nice, bulky little bit of helicopter, that one. Are you going to texture it or uh, have it as is? Because I reckon, like, ah, you can never have too many polys, dude. What you should do with this, okay, um, I don't know if you know how to do this or not, but I'll show you a quick little thing that I do. Uh, it makes me feel like I'm cheating, but I do love it. So, because I like that helicopter. So, what you want to do is, I don't know if you use CD Studio Max, Blender, Maya, whatever. Okay, oh, don't worry about that. Uh, unwrapping is so 2010, dude, you know? Watch this, so file, uh, let's find something that I can use, let me see. So, here we go, we'll load my brain board. Can't go wrong with bread more. Take a minute to load. This is a very old model, so the scale's all over the place. I do apologise. Right. <clears throat> oh, bread more. Okay, so this should be a single mesh, and it is. And uh, I can cheat to unwrap this, to be honest. Okay. You didn't used to be able to do this, but you can now. Um, it won't be pretty. But, just to kind of show you. So you can see everything's different coloured, which is a help. I don't have to do that myself. But all I was doing was assigning things by material ID, right? Now, what I'll do is, I'm just going to take the arm, I think. Oh, what do I that for? So, because otherwise it'll be like massively too large. Well, it won't be too large, it'll take forever. There we go. Jesus. I'm such a messy model as I'm right. This was 2006 I made this as well, you know, the first part of it. 2006, bloody hell. That's the weird thing, like 2006 doesn't even seem that long ago to me. I still remember making it, so I'm going to figure. Alright, let's get rid of all these bits in the way, because I don't need them. And I just want to keep the core. <laughs> Thanks, man. Made me feel old. Yeah, um, at the time when I was recording tutorials, like when I was doing this one, my son was about, my youngest son was about nine months old. So I used to sit him on my desk with me. I mean, it was nice having him there. Man. Right. That should be it. Let me just check. There might be, I think there's a polygon hidden over here somewhere. No, there isn't. Go with it. Okay. Right click, unhide all, make sure I've got everything now. Right, so I'm going to take this Dreadlord arm, and uh, apart from the fact that I'm a 3D printer, I think I like it, save as Dread Arm 1. Okay, now this is this is what I really like about, you know, like quicks and all this kind of biz. I'll just uh, quickly go in here and. Yeah, it will be. It will be, Ed. 
Right, I don't want to do too much. This is a habit I used to have in the past where I'd make everything a single mesh, because everything needed to be single meshes back in the day. It doesn't really need that anymore, but uh, by the way it goes, I suppose. And I'm going to go through here. I'm just going to quickly select these. Sorry if I'm boring the living pants off you guys, by the way. I'm really sorry about this, but uh, it's what I do, man. Right, I'm going to make a new material because I'm not seeing what I want here. Oh, come on. F10. Uh, renderer will be scan line for the minute. And. I bubble. Jeez, the sneak texture on this. There, that one. Let's see it. I'm going to make it like a really nice, bright green. No. That one, whatever that is, color blindness rocks. Okay, so anyway, sorry, I'm just trying to show you how to do this. So, all I've done is I've assigned basically different colors to different areas of my map, okay, that are kind of sharing the same material. All right, now I'm going to grab it all and I'm going to pretend I'm doing good at unwrapping and I'm just going to go to unwrap BBW and this will horrify anyone who's good at unwrapping. I'm just going to go to open UV editor. <laughs> Look at that. What a mess. Okay, I'll just select everything. Mapping. Flatten. And I'll change this to about 55. And that's it. Right. Now I'm just going to whistle and look out the window. <laughs> Too late. Yay. Come on, you knew I was going to do this. It's a messy way of doing it. I wouldn't have all the little gubbins and buttons and things on it, to be honest, if I'm doing this. And it would be a very, very bad idea doing things this way with this kind of model. I mean, I would definitely get rid of all the rivets and all the other crap I've got sitting on top of it. But I'm in a hurry. <sighs> Oh goodness, yes it does. Yes it does. Also, when it comes to um, tubes, pipes and other parts like that, it makes quite a bit of a mess. But I'm just trying to kind of show quickly how you can start getting, uh, getting some results going. If it doesn't crash, which it probably will. Oh, there's some David Lynch music on, I forgot. Oh well, never mind. <sighs> I'll just watch this little number in the bottom corner go up very, very slowly. I'm trying to imagine doing this on my old Pentium 4, and I don't think it'd happen. I remember I had to do a render once, and it was just using the scan line, and it was just some, spun, it was just some spun sunspots for a show that was going to like the Edinburgh Festival, and they'd paid me to do this. And I had like a four day deadline. <laughs> Look at that, it's horrible. Oh, that's perfect. And, um, sorry, I had a four day deadline. And, um, oh my god, I forgot what I said. Yeah, and it took literally to the last hour for it to do this goddamn thing. Oh, that's a really messy, lovely, horrible thing. Anyway, this is just to show you, right? So, anyway, with this all selected, what I'm going to do is, oh yeah, definitely. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my lighting, I'm going to pick standard light, skylight, drop it in my scene, then I'm going to select this part, hit zero. Now there's some new render baking came into, I think, 2021. Don't care. Um, now with pelvis inner here, I'm going to add, and I'm going to add a just a diffuse map, not a complete. I'm not going to add it to anything though. And I'm going to make sure that it is 2048 by 2048. And then I'm going to render. It'll call an error. I'll click continue anyway. Right, now we have a color map. If you can call it that. It's very messy. Now, I'm going to save my color map. So I'll stick it straight on my desktop. It's a messy map. JPEG format. 
And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to export just the arm. So file, export, selected as a film box file to arm. There we go. Right, bear with. Some materials may not export. Here we go. Right, now if I close this down and go to Quixel Mixer. Now I love Mixer, partly because it's completely free, and also partly because as a colorblind person, it's brilliant, because it takes all the guesswork out for me. So I'm not downloading the update yet. Right, I'm just going to make a new project called Dreadnought. Okay, click add. Uh, new mix, I'm going to call it arm. 24 yeah, it was in. And then over here, custom mesh. Now, this may be absolutely ruined and not look good at all. In which case, I'll have it. Arm. Oh, excellent. It did load. Right, so there's my dreadlock arm in uh, all its real time glory. And under here, under my base layer, in material ID, I'm going to load my messy map. And it'll give me a load of these, which is great. Lots of nice options to choose from because I can't remember what any of the colours were. That's grey. Right, okay, so grey for the main metal. Now, I'm going to go over here and. Yeah, it's free, completely free. Plus, you get everything in the Megascans library for free. What more could you want? I love this thing. Right, so I'm going to put some metal on it. Uh, blah, 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 metal, here we go. Uh, I've looked for something completely horrible. I'm sure I had a green paint, never mind. Here we go, scratched painted black iron. And my scratched painted black iron, if I add an ID mask, it's only going to go on my dark grey. Ooh, nice. And is there anything else I can stick it on? No. No. Maybe. Yes. It is, it's flipping great. Now then, uh, let's see, I want to add a new one. I uh, don't have a lot of materials downloaded, unfortunately, but I've got some fabric. So, let's see, I'll put this furniture fabric on, just because it's there. It'll look weird as hell with furniture fabric on, but that's fine. Right click, and I do mask. And let's just go through them until I find something I think it will work with. Yeah, that maybe. And I'll change it to albedo to good man, you should. There we go. Uh, let me see. Now I'm gonna pick another one. So let's see. I'll put a different coloured metal on. So if I just go to my metal folder, it's even got smart materials, which are great because smart materials are like normal ones, but it automatically works out areas where like it's gonna put rust and stuff. Right, so let's see. I am an ID mask. No. Yes. No. No. Okay, that'll be fine. Just there then. Uh, watch, I'll show you this bit. You'll like this. So add surface layer, and I'll change it from surface to smart material. And steel with a ceramic coating of old. Uh, probably presumably anodized steel. This will take a minute to load because it's a complicated material. There we are. And an ID mask for that one. There we go. And then if I open the folder, I'll go to my let's see ceramic coating. And I can change the albedo colour on that to Maybe that one over here. Right, next. I'm sure I've got some others that can stick on. 
I mean, the reason I'm getting these edges, by the way, is because my UV map is horrible. Okay, but uh, another thing I can do as well is I can apply decals to it if I so desire. So here's a metal porthole. Why not? Why not apply a metal porthole? Where's it applied it? Where's my porthole? Where's my porthole? Oh, for sakes, what a porthole. Oh. All the way down here at the bottom. Let's move that. It's got a lot of tools. I'll just show you um, some other things that come with it free. I mean, you've got mixer, you also get bridge, um, ID mask, that's for green only, dark brown. It's like a guessing game. Which one was it? Because I forgot. There, that one. Right, so I only need to check here on that one. And if I go to this placement, I can change it to just a freeform projection. Oh, there it is, look, being massive. So I can scale it. I'm sure you kind of see the. Uh, this is going to start eating actually into my processor time, so I'll stop doing it. But basically, you can pl you can place decals wherever you want. Now, here's the good bit. Um, blah, 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 blah. I can now go here to export. And I can export it in all the various different formats, and it'll export it with all the separate maps, and I can put it straight into Unreal Engine. In fact, there's a bridge that I can use that will take it straight to Unreal Engine. File save. Let's save this. As well as which, though, we also have this. Now, this is another tool that Quixel gives you for free. Hello, Quixel Bridge. All right, uh, are you able to use the studio license because you run online courses and auto just recognize that? Uh, pretty much, yeah. Um, they used to send me NFRs to teach with, which are not for resale versions. And then they were like, just use the student version. So I was like, fine. Because I don't sell my models, I'm just doing the training kind of stuff. So that works out fine for me. Um, what was I going to say? If you're using the student version and you're worried it's going to run out, just go to students.autodesk.com, make yourself a new account, and put yourself down as working from home. Okay? And then, no word of a lie, they'll ask for verification. I'll show you the verification letter. Okay? Because uh, this is what I sent in to them. I'm sure it's here somewhere. Hang on. Uh, May, 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 June, 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 slapdash documentation. Uh, why can I never find things? Uh, let's, hang on, I'll check this is it, but I'm going to open it off the side. Yeah, there you go. Here is a good letter you can use, right? To show that you're learning from home. So I gave myself an enrollment letter. So if you just copy that format, I even misspelled the word principle if you look. I'm pretty sure it's principle. There you go. So uh, yeah, just send them one of those and they'll be happy with Larry. Right. Oh yeah, and like I was saying, this is Quixel Bridge, right? Let's say you need an asset urgently, and you don't want to make one yourself. 3D assets, just click on that. You've got all these different things. These are all free to use in Unreal Engine for any project you want. Hardware, you know, modular pipes, bits of chain, dirt hill padlocks. And these are all PBR, like um, 3D scans. Oh yeah, yeah, I'll pass. They just want people using their software. They could not give a toss. 
they want the studios to pay the money for the software and they want students using their software. So, you know, they're quite happy. Look at that. All the fruit and baked goods you could possibly need. I mean, I used a load of um, the free assets that they provide, and these are professional. I used to pay a monthly subscription for this stuff, and then it became free because Epic bought them. But, um, God, this is going to start eating my computer. I'm going to find where my mouse has gone. Does it close all windows? Are you still safe? Go away, Quixel Mixer. Made in Unity. Unity. And it's owned by Unreal Engine. Oh, I'll not go down well. Right, so yeah, if we go up here to... Oh, bloody hell. If we go up here to the kitchen, in the lighthouse, I needed, like, um, food and other things in the kitchen to make it look better. So I just went and grabbed a load, and so my kitchen is stocked with cans, potatoes, foods, and fruits, all from the uh, all from the range. You know? Oh, right! I'm going to have to have myself a coffee because I've been sat here for two hours, I think, or some silly amount of time. Anyway. What time is it? Let's have a look. Oh, only one hour eighteen minutes. That's not bad actually. Oh yeah, absolutely. Well, it's a lighthouse. The idea is that obviously they have to have enough provisions to last them for two weeks. Um, so when the game starts, obviously you've got plenty of food. And, you know, everyone's in fairly good spirits and stuff. And, uh, you know, the rest of the game spent being happy with nothing bad happening whatsoever, which is good. And then everyone leaves the lighthouse perfectly well. <sighs> Sarcasm. Well then, anyway, my loves, I am going to go and get myself a coffee and possibly a sandwich because I'm quite peckish. And then I might do some more work on this um, once I've satiated my fat belly. Because being a 3D artist, I have to have a belly full of them, entirely full of food. So, to Z447 and to Creative Ed, and also to Darren Gray, who briefly popped in, I shall wish you a fond adieu. And uh, hopefully, hopefully see you guys later on. And I hope the information I gave you about Quixel helps, because it is free and it is bloody amazing. No problem at all. Catch you later, man, and catch you later, Ed. Bye-bye.